so much. Hello, everyone. Welcome. And thank you for joining us for LACP's Pride Month Artist Talks. This year, we're focusing on LGBTQIA plus photographer artists who are currently working in Los Angeles. And I'm honored and excited to moderate all three evenings of talks. And I hope you will join us again next Wednesday for our final talk. Tonight, we will be spending some time with Jen Rosenstein and John Weiblinger. They will each be sharing some of their work. And then towards the end of the evening, we'll have some time for a Q&A. So please put your questions in the chat there as we go. And then at the end, we'll address them. All right. <clears throat> Excuse me. So let's get started. Uh, Jen Rosenstein is a native of Los Angeles, where she works as a director, photographer, and artist. She graduated in 2008 with a BFA in photography from Art Center College of Design. Her work can be seen on national ad campaigns and magazine covers. She photographs Grammy award-winning artists like John Baptiste, John Legend, Foo Fighters, and many other artists, artists and celebrities. She's also directed many music videos for bands like Neon Trees, Jason Mraz, Tiffany Haddish, and more. Rosenstein's photography is a reflection of her deep relationship within a creative community of musicians, artists, filmmakers, and LGBTQ people. While her subjects are strong, her images uh, seek to capture transformation and vulnerability, a trusted emotional exchange between friends immortalized. As a woman behind the camera, Rosenstein likes to explore all the ways that femaleness presents, including what it means to take up space in the world as a woman. Music, joy, and abundant feelings is the heartbeat of her collaborations and her series of beautiful human portraits, the result. Jen, welcome. Thank you for joining us this evening. Thank you so much, Matt. The floor is yours. Oh man, uh, thank you. I am oddly very nervous and I think that's okay. Um, and I really appreciate, thank you for introducing me and for uh, LACP to have and inviting me to this really cool uh, events. Um, it's always such an honor to be asked to speak about my work and it's always so humbling to even be asked because I'm like, why? <laughs> so, so thank you. I, um, I really appreciate that so much. Um, as Matthew said, I am from Los Angeles. I'm a photographer, director and an artist based here in LA. Uh, somewhat born and raised. Um, um, so this is me. It's shocking. Um, okay, I'm going to go ahead and start. So, um, uh, so yeah, so I graduated from Art Center College of Design in uh, 2008. And leading up to that time, um, I was always, as a young, um, as a young person, young queer person, I was really always into self-expression, photography, moving images, um, just capturing. I remember as a kid, you know, taking a camera, uh, those throwaway cameras and just taking photos, bunch and bunch of photos, even if it was like a weird photo of my foot next to a gas pump. You know what I mean? Like, I didn't know what I was doing. I was just taking photos. And every day I would take it to the one hour uh, spot always kind of taking uh, these photos and going to like a, the hour photo lab and sending it in and, you know, getting all excited to see the images and what it was. And, and that kind of like developed over time more too. You know, I took uh, classes in high school, junior high school, high school, not really knowing, but I knew, I knew, I always knew I wanted to be a photographer and artist. <clears throat> and I always think that's funny when uh, I show a lot of musicians and they'll ask me like, when did you know you wanted to be a photographer? And it's the same, like, when did you know you wanted to be a, a rock star? You know, like, <clears throat> I think it's, it's something that's always been in us and all artists, you know, I think, you know, just like being an LGBTQ person, eventually it comes out like, this is who we are. And I kind of always knew, <clears throat> getting me, getting all choked up here. I'm not, it's just, uh, um, that I always kind of knew that um, this is who, what I wanted to do. So here I am. So uh, the work that I'm going to start showing you right now is, um, well, as a student at Art Center, I was, you know, at this point, this project started around 2006, 2007. And um, at that time, um, 
you know, I was already out. I came out when I was 17. Um, so like in 1999, 2000, I came out and um, it wasn't until probably 2005, 2006, 2007, I was really exposed to the transgender community in a way that I've never been, I didn't know about. You know, at that point, I didn't know. And I think during that time, things started becoming a little bit more mainstream. And that's probably why I became more aware. Um, and so this series for me was about, um, I had questions. I didn't want to assume, so I had questions. I wanted to get myself in front of these really amazing individuals. You know, at one point, you know, I was like not questioning my own my own self, but just I had questions. And as an artist, um, I had this tool to kind of get in and document and ask questions and investigate and do my own little seeking and searching. So this this is what this body of work was, and it kind of developed into. Uh, this body of work that has over like 300 portraits in it that I've shot in Los Angeles, San Francisco, New York. Um, I've reshot many people many of times. So I'm just going to kind of start showing. This is uh, my first portrait of that series. And I was a student at Art Center. And at the time, somebody told me that, again, this was like, what, 15, 16 years ago that I started the series. And I was told, you know, maybe I shouldn't do this body of work. Um, and as who the person that I am, I, I did it anyways, because I wanted, I, I just needed to. So um, this is the first portrait I took of this series. His name's Jake. Um, and he was one of the first trans people that were really, really open to my questions and really open to let me just sit in front of him and ask him questions, questions that I didn't know at this point were PC or not. I didn't know, I didn't know that there was a, a book of what's PC or not to, to, you know, ask these questions. And I did, and he was so, so genuine, so great, and so loving, and so kind, and didn't judge me for those questions. And this is what started the project. And I'm, I'll always be so grateful to him for that. And um, because of him, this project flourished into what it is. Um, and he introduced me to the whole community because he felt safe in the community. Every, every Sunday for months, we would meet at his house and um, he would bring the community, the trans community, and there would be a line outside his front door and people would come and sit with me for an hour and we would do these portraits. So this is just a little glimpse of that uh, over, the, over the years. And you could see at the beginning, this was his home. Um, Again, this is a long, long time ago, and, and I've reshot a lot of these people over the years and their transition. And that's kind of like, that's why this project is called Transformational Project, because it's like this, everyone's transformed to who they want to be, who they represent, who they want to be represented as. And it was this, this beautiful, safe space for me and for them. Let me know if I'm going too quick, too fast, or too slow moderator friends. So this was shot in San Francisco. And you know, the, the questions I would ask would be like, you know, uh, how did you know? What was it? What was it for you? You know, um, tell me about your life. Tell me about your stories. And I think as, as a photographer, like, these are the questions if we're, you know, sitting with, with a subject, with somebody, especially if it's a personal work, like going into it of like, what, what are we doing here? Why? What are these questions? And, um, and do they have questions? And they did. They had a lot of questions. And it was beautiful. Some of these, these subjects I photograph are still like friends I've had for many, many years. And, um, you know, it's, it's been such an honor doing this project. And eventually I would like to turn this into a documentary. Eventually I would like to do a book. I've been asked many times if, if there's a book coming out yet. And, and to be honest, I don't even know when the project's going to be over. I, I want to take this all over the country. I want to take this to towns where, you know, uh, it's quite opposite of Los Angeles with the LGBTQ community, you know, like a place where, you know, it's so much more underground. Like I want to go, uh, overseas and other countries. Um, 
so I don't know when this project will be over. I know it's going to be done when it's done and when I feel like it's done. And I'm not quite sure it's done yet. Um, there's a lot of stories I want to tell. And you know, it's interesting too, like these were shot in New York and what a, the stories I heard just in the trans community in New York, you know, in LA when I shot this project, it was so, um, everyone was so open. They were so open to come and get photographed by me. And, you know, I've, I've done this um, many years at the uh, village at the center during, during Trans Pride, and they've always been so gracious of letting me have a space there and people come and get uh, photographed by me. And everyone is oh, from all ages, from six to like in their seventies will come and there's a line and like we sell out, like our, our booking schedule always gets packed. And I always like fit people in because I, I would hate to, to not allow people to come and tell their story and get photographed. But in New York, this was a very different story. And I think just a few people came for the whole weekend and they were very shy and not very trustworthy. And I understand, I, I heard stories of what they go through in New York and I would probably be wary as well. And again, I've, I've photographed a lot of these people many a times and um, people will come back just to get photographed to show me uh, what they've done the next step and to fill in who they are. It's just been really amazing to watch and so you know, beautiful to like witness. This is Erica. I started photographing her when she was six. Six years old, I think she's now 11 and um, Funny story. I haven't seen her in a couple of years because of the pandemic. I haven't shot this project in a couple of years. And um, last weekend, her uh, her mom's, uh, I guess, ex boyfriend now um, stopped me and said, "Jen, Jen, I'm Erica's, you know, ex stepdad, something like that." And he was so like grateful for our, our experiences and started showing me all of these photos of her now and how he's a part of her life and how he uh, he's just always there for her. And um, I mean, I we talked about, he's texting me photos and about photographing her again and where she's at and she's so gorgeous. And but I hear the stories that, you know, the struggles that she has in school and the bullying and, um, you know, there's there's a journey that this, this little girl has and I'm, Great Jen, I have a question for you. You mentioned um, talking and asking questions of these folks. Did you do? You, is it part of your process to um, write down their answers or record them anyway? Is that going to be part of the project, or that's going to be part of the project? Yeah, I, I've spoken to a couple of the, the subjects I've worked with. Uh, in the past about going and going to their homes and, and doing, uh, asking questions, doing another photo shoot in their spaces, um, recording audio and video. Yeah, does that answer your question? Yes, thank you. I, I don't even know who asked me, it's like a, it's like a voice that just pops up. <laughs> um, It's really, it's really special people, the courage. So that led me to, it's a very different body of work. That led me to, so when I was at Art Center, I, I started that project. And because of that project, I, um, I was asked to shoot for a magazine and they wanted me to shoot this, funny enough, this um, Republican candidate in Orange County based on the first photo you guys saw of Jake having that cigarette. They were like, you know, we want you to shoot this. And I shot for that magazine and I shot that Republican um, candidate. And um, what was interesting about that is this has been my, my whole, my whole career has been what I'm about to tell you right now, which is insane. Awesome. Is that that magazine uh, came to the school to do an assignment? So the assignment was for a class, and the class had a choice to do it or not. People in the class, it wasn't very much pay, but 
I'm somebody that's always been a yes. Like, yes, I'll do it. LACP, you want me to speak? Yes. You know, like I'll, I'll, I'm always going to say yes, even if I don't want to, for whatever reasons. I think it's just my, <clears throat> my artist brain. I'm like, no, you know, like, I don't want to do it. Um, but this magazine asked me to shoot this guy and, and I did it. And it was based off of that first image I showed you guys. And then, um, because I said, yes, I did that assignment. I turned it in on time and I did everything they told me to do. They gave me another assignment, which was actually a painting assignment. And I shopped for that magazine every month for about three years. And one of the assignments was uh, meeting this guy, Joey in the top left corner that has green foam behind him. And that was that image was for an editorial for the magazine. And that guy looked and looked at my work and he was like, <clears throat> I love your work. I love how you photograph this community. How about we photograph the surf industry? Um, and he was into uh, board shaping, uh, manufacturing boards, uh, green boards for the um, surfboard, like lost surfboard company, et cetera. And, and so that got me into shooting <clears throat> surf, surfers, surfboard shapers, and they welcomed me just like the trans community welcomed me. Every other weekend, I would drive down to San Clemente and met all these amazing people, the Pasquitz family, everybody, the lost community, um, Billabong, like all these amazing uh, surf companies and surfers and bodyboarders. And some of these people are like, you know, kind of like Olympic surfers now and like, really cool thing. So I end up doing this project. This is a few of those images. Um, again, it's you'll see the aesthetic is very similar to my my trans um, project. Um, and this is also a project that I would like to like continue on. I haven't shot that for many years. Lost surfboards ended up licensing a bunch of these images for t-shirts. So there's a whole like two seasons full of images that I've taken like this guy on uh, lost surfboard um, t-shirts, which I have lying around, which is pretty cool. Pasquitz, Garcia. And that has led me into what I do now. Uh, uh, which is so based on these images, again, story of every my life, based on these images. So this guy who wanted me to shoot all of this um, for our own personal project was like, you know, hey, um, Jason Mraz, I want to give Jason Mraz a surfboard. Um, do you want to drive down to San Clemente? He's going to meet us in San Clemente. And um, do you want to photograph them with the surfboard? And this is like around the time he just won a Grammy for Lucky and he was kind of a hot thing. He was big. And I was like, okay, let's do it. Yes, I'll come down and shoot this dude. And so I went down there and I shot the dude and he looked at my work and he was like, we need to do stuff together. And um, some of that is, is in the slideshow, but we ended up, I still work with him. He's one of my dearest friends. He sang at my wedding with my wife. Um, you know, we've traveled the world together, but that was based, and that started my career. So I, I shot Jason Mraz and because I said yes, and then he said yes, and we both said yes, and we just like did these really cool projects together. And that's what really lifted my career and, and the stuff that I do now, um, based off of this image I did at, in school, you know, led me to really cool places. Um, since then, you know, I've done all of Kiss's work the last couple of years, um, that you've probably have seen around for this tour out now. Um, I shoot uh, a lot for magazine covers. This is one of my subjects I recently did a cover of named Tosin Abasi. He's like a legendary guitarist. Um, I also do a lot of commercial work. Um, this is Justin Willman. He has a Netflix show. He's a magician, comic, really cool dude. Uh, we did a shoot a couple months ago here in LA. It's the same kind of trust that I have that I received and that I, you know, hope for from the beginning of this sitting with a subject, getting to know what they need and what they want, and this trust. And sometimes, like we, you know, most of the time we go in knowing what we're going to do, obviously. Um, 
but then we have this really cool uh adventure into creativity and things just happen like this image you know like oh what will happen if we just do this and then what if we just like draw this cool tux like a magician tux and get that hat and you know and this ends up uh this ended up being like the image for his tour right now uh, and also shoot for capital records a lot a lot of record label work you'll see throughout <laughs> But it's always been about like with me and my subjects, it's always about that connection and that contact and um, sometimes the best images that I've taken have been just as just being not like look at me, you know, say cheese, you know, like I, I don't say cheese, but like kind of, you know what I mean? And like um, some of the best images are just like this, like with Paul Stanley, a kiss of just being and we were probably just talking about Paul Stanley things, you know, whatever Paul Stanley likes to talk about. Same with Jean. I mean, Jean was Jean, but like, you know, these images of, of being, you know, in these places with these people and feeling comfortable and confident. And, you know, then they were like, come, come to our show and like, do your thing at our show. And, you know, I've had these really great experiences of not only shooting people in the studio, but also seeing what they do, seeing their craft in action and being trusted, which is such an honor. I definitely don't take that for granted. So, you know, things could change in a heartbeat. Here's Jason, this is a, a few of these clips. So with Jason, with Waitress, and let me know too, if I'm getting close to my time, I'll, I'll shut up. Um, with Jason, he invited me out to New York. He was doing Waitress the Musical, with Sarah Gorillas, and um, came up with an idea. I don't have it on the slideshow, but I came up with this idea to do the stop motion of his time doing Waitress, which is really neat. Um, but these are some of the, the photos I took of just following him, just a few, a few shots. I do a lot of um, fly in the wall. Um, some with them, it's not like I'm this invisible entity in their room, but I'm there, I'm their pal, and I'm taking, you know, I'm telling their story. And I just, you know, just let them be them. Same with uh, Dave Grohl with the Food Fighters. I was introduced to him through a magazine cover shoot I did um, a couple of years, a few years ago now, I guess. Um, and it was right before they were starting the tour. Obviously, this was pre pandemic. And, um, we had this really great photo shoot together and he ex we exchanged phone numbers. He's like, let's, I wanna be your friend, give me your phone. He put his number in my phone and we ended up being friends. And he um, invited me to uh, a tour rehearsal, rehearsal, I think it was in Bakersfield. He's like, come bring your camera. And um, I get there and he's like, let's, let's go. And, you know, we have these, these amazing conversations and along the way on her journey, I was, I just snapped away. And from there, I ended up going on tour with him, shadowing him and the band and, um, you know, really having this great experience with these guys. Probably like my low key dream of being a rock star coming out of <laughs> these guys. I don't think they want me to sing. But again, it's kind of this like fly in the wall. Um, participating in their lives, but not, but just documenting it. And, you know, the cool thing is when I went on this tour, Leica sponsored me and they like gave me a camera. So I shot these like really great black and whites and black and white has always been a part of my aesthetic since the beginning. And um, this was such a cool uh, moment to capture. Taylor and Dave were on the ground and it was the first time they saw the, the new rock show tour stage. And Taylor looked at Dave and, was, and this is the moment he was like, Bro, we're fucking rock stars. And like, cause it was like this moving stage it was crazy. If anybody has seen their show the last couple of years, um, this is the first time that they actually saw that stage. Um, it was magical. It was a magical moment. 
this was on tour backstage. Them in their jam room, pre-show, two studio shots. And recently, I was uh, brought on board to photograph John Legend uh, the last month or so, uh, getting his residency ready in Las Vegas. So I traveled with him to Philly for his first band rehearsals, Reno for their tech rehearsals on the stage, and finally in Vegas for a week, um, telling the story about that, getting ready. And this is some of these, those images here. Which was such a great experience. Um, John was great to work with. His team were amazing, and they let me do what I do best, and just let me be and follow and document. It was fun and silly. So everything from the band rehearsal to you know getting him hyped up to actually. Uh, time to take the stage. Again, I don't take any of this for granted. I know how special it is to have this kind of access to, um, in a way, start to become part of the production and document and be part of that story. Recently, uh, the other week, uh, I went over to Mark Marin's house to do a couple of portraits. And again, it was one of those things that um, we probably uh, hung out for about a good hour just talking about life, talking about our love of cats. Um, he's a cat dad, I'm a cat mom, or I'm a cat dad, depends on the day. Um, and we just, uh, no, I'm definitely a cat dad. And we just kind of um, hung out and took photos in and around his home, outside of his home, just like, stories it was like story time and it was such a great experience see there he is with his cat they're kind of making the same expression probably the same expression i'm making now maybe i don't know oh this is a little repeat you're welcome there you go um also butch walker here in la I was lucky enough to, um, right before Sam Smith uh, kind of went super big. Uh, I was with him the day before his big show that kind of, I think it was Coachella. And we spent a good couple hours together hanging out at a gig in LA. And it was such a great experience, such a sweet guy. Spent some time shooting with kids at Pentatonix. I kind of feel like there were kids here. I did their first photo shoot in Los Angeles for LA Magazine when they first started out. And now they're just like, so cool to watch where they're, they're at now. I was asked by Snow Patrol to come and document them during the recording process. Uh, me and Jason Mraz, a lot of my work has, you know, sometimes if it's casual like this, you'll see me kind of see my foot, you might see my reflection, um, these intimate moments. This is uh, the head and the heart photographed them a couple of times in LA. It's Jennifer Hudson, I used to photograph her for years for an ad agency um, during her Weight Watchers time. And um, for years, I would just be with her taking photos and her, you know, her makeup and the, just hanging out. I watched her son grow up, you know what I mean? Like we have so many photos together and she's such a sweetheart. That was such a great time of my career too. Jason, when we were on tour, it's one of those things that we were on tour on the East Coast and there was this rig in the back and I was like, grab your guitar, let's let's take some cool shots. And the, the top of the truck there was just like a huge light box. It was just light, it was incredible. And we got this, we got this great shot. I shoot a lot with Walk the Moon, which has been great. Iggy Pop, 
uh, and uh, Queen of the Stone Age. Garbage, so backstage hangs. Also the last few months, um, not so much the last couple of months, but this last year, I've uh, documented John Batiste quite a bit, which has been really neat watching his career blow up. Um, same kind of thing, I've just um, been trusted and to hang out. And we just get these really cool images. This John is such a great subject to work with because he's game. He's just a big yes, and he loves to play. And I said, let's play. And the next thing you know, he's like jumping up and down like a kid. And I, I loved it so much, so much. It was so cool. I hung out with him during Colbert, uh, some pretty big shows the last couple of uh, several months. Just kind of watching him do his thing has been so cool. You know, again, here I am in a shot. Um, but these, these, just these moments, oh, there you go. Just these moments, you know, pre-production of the show with uh, the director and practicing these lines. He was doing some stuff with Cindy Lauper. Things as Global Citizen. These were published with Rolling Stone. This, uh, I think Gucci was fitting him, and that's his prayer director, Jamal, who's awesome. I think that's Olivia Rodriguez, Rudigo. I don't know. I'm not, I'm not, I don't know, Pop. But, you know. Just these moments, these moments that a lot of people don't get to get and capture. Oh, is that smile? And again, I always like, you know, capture a lot of like hanging out to getting ready to stage time and capturing that, those moments in between. Such a cool dude. Also, like I said, she left the record labels too. And uh, this is uh, Gerald Boyd uh, from My Chemical Romance. Also, uh, pre pandemic, uh, I shot a lot with Tiffany Haddish. She had me go on tour with her. I ended up shooting, um, we met through, uh, she did a special on Netflix called uh, Black Mitzvah, and I photographed um, the key art and the photos of. Of the show, so while she's on stage performing, there are all these like images came that came up, and we emulated um, her story in these photos, and that that's how we met. And then we just kind of became buddies, and we traveled and did some cool stuff together. Also, I've done work with Margaret Cho. I was really obsessed with Janet Jackson in the 90s, and I really wanted to uh, emulate that, that tour shirt that I think most of us had. I think it was a cover of a Rolling Stone magazine of somebody grabbing her breast. So Margaret was getting. Smashing Pumpkins, Pentatonic, Scots. Then I also, you know, I direct a lot of music videos as well. And I, 
been so, I've had these amazing experiences with people like Milk, um, who is does a lot of social justice work. And, um, her music benefits a lot of social justice uh, groups and has a loud voice about, with uh, abortions, about LGBTQ, women's rights, <clears throat> et cetera. And um, these are one of, uh, I directed a music video for her like a month or two back called Power. And as I'm directing, I usually have like my Leica camera with me and I snap as I go. It's always, even though I'm directing, I'm, I can't put the camera down, I'm still directing and photographing. Ozzy, I shot him for a magazine cover. He was great to work with. Zach Wilde is uh, Ozzy's guitarist and also on his own band. Jason Mraz. Jerry Cantrell, Allison Chains. Again, always having those moments if you notice all my images, like these eyes that are like straight on and intimate and Sorry about these bubbles. Always also able to have kind of creative freedom with everything that we've done. So like this with Joshua, I had this idea as actually a <laughs> shot and uh, yeah. There you guys go. That's all I got. Thank you so much, Jen. That's a lot of amazing work there. Thank you, Jen. Thank you guys, I really appreciate it. Um, now it's my pleasure to introduce our second guest this evening, John Weiblinger. John Weiblinger is a new media artist who explores masculinity and desire through his post photography compositions, hailing from an academic background with degrees in English, women's studies and library science. Weiblinger redefined himself as an artist in his early 60s. Quote, my growing body of work is around a, th a theme that I've been exploring for some time now, my own relationship with male beauty, eroticism, and romanticizing a queer sensibility. I've been re revisioning some of the images I've collected over the years, establishing them in a new context from a different perspective. Many of the men in these images have been collected from hard porn sites, and I've reposition them, reimagine them in different contexts, merging them with my own photographs as the basis for this re-envisioning. So each work is a layering and recombination of two very different images and ideas, end quote. He began exhibiting his work at the Los Angeles Center for Digital Art or the LACDA in 2014. Since then, he has contributed to I'm sorry, he's continued to exhibit in galleries and has established a loyal group of collectors. Weiblinger has, um, was a member artist of LACDA and is currently a member of the Art Lounge Collective, the Los Angeles Art Association, the Los Angeles Center of Photography, and Tech Pressionist Visual Artists. So John, it's good to see you again, even if it's uh, over Zoom. It's been a while. Thank you, Matthew. Feel free to uh, take it away. All right. Um, hi, everybody. And um, thank you for joining um, this talk. Um, I was really amazed with Jen's work and really grateful to see that. 
and really also grateful to follow her because my work takes a whole different aspect um, and is based on a whole different process, which I think is interesting as well. Um, I just want to talk a little bit about myself and, um, you know, what I believe about queer, queer visibility and the importance of us being visible. Um, Jason, if you want to put up the first slide, that would be great. Image um, of me participating in a march at Occupy Los Angeles that I was very involved um, involved with. And um, <clears throat> I really brought a queer sensibility to that process. I created a queer affinity group. I, you know, uh, organized and held a queer general assembly and a transgender gen general assembly. And um, I just think that it is important for us to make our presence known and important for us to make our presence known, not just in queer venues or in queer spaces, but in all spaces. Um, so that's kind, of, um, that's kind of where I wanted to start. Um, I also wanted to kind of give people a little bit of history about myself and where I came from, um, I'm late to being to being an artist. Um, I was born in 1953, so I've been around for more than half a century and uh, have seen have seen a lot, and you know have also confronted that whole experience of. Um, having lots of shame and having lots of secrets about what was going on with me and growing up in a world where I was called a faggot well before I knew what that actually meant. And so part of my process and what I believe is important is to um, give a different viewpoint um, about those things. So a quick summary about myself is, um, my, you know, I kind of came out in high school in 1970, which was a challenging and difficult place. Um, I went to my first uh, Pride March in New York City in 1973, which was really felt really, really scary. Um, I was really radical um, at that time, very involved with gay liberation. And then um, I kind of did a shift of direction um, and chose to, you know, kind of engage myself in an academic career at Rutgers University and at the University of Southern California. Um, I've always, always made bad choices and selected inappropriate partners. And that is part of the process that I have been trying to work through. Um, in terms of just before we get to my art, I just wanna say that, you know, I went through a really bad period in terms of uh, a descent into drug addiction. And it took me a while to get clean and rediscover and recreate myself. So I got clean at age 48 and decided I wanted to be an artist at age 60. So I guess the point I wanna make about that is it is never too late to change and it's never too late to try something new. Um, so let's go to the next slide. Um, this, represents some of the first work um, that I started creating in 2012. And it involved images of men with flowers. Um, and the, the, the flowers that I used were actually shot on Pacific Coast Highway. On my, I worked in, um, on, in Malibu for quite a while and drove the PCH on a daily basis and took lots of pictures there. Um, as you can see, 
I use this image a number of times in different ways um, because I've always felt that it was important to present men with flowers and with nature because that is not a, a way in which men are normally are, are normally um, are, are normally viewed or presented. Um, and so that is kind of my exploring my own shame and my own sensibilities around masculinity and what it means to me. Um, if you would go to the next slide. Um, another thing that I um, like to do is shoot through windows um, and uh, see the reflection or the visions of men in, window, in windows. And again, um, as I said, the men in all of these images are appropriated from porn sites, um, but I've re-envisioned them and presented them in a different way. I'm looking at them in a different way. Um, the image on, let's see, my right, which would be your left, um, of the guy in the window is one of my favorite pieces. It was an early piece. It was one of the pieces that made me decide that this is what I wanted to do. Um, it was, it's a very carefully constructed image because it's an image I took in the hallway of my old building in Koreatown, looking out through a window, and then I placed the guy um, into the window and, you know, a kind of layered it in a way to make him look like he was outside the window looking in. Um, uh, next slide, please. And this is one of my favorite pieces, again, looking out through my window and um, processing what I felt was a really romantic and lovely image. And that was the point. Okay, so um, it, it's always been one of my goals to kind of, you know, figure out what being a man, what being masculine, what being my gender meant because um, I always felt that, that I presented inappropriately. And um, I was teased about that a lot. Um, I was also um, beat up about that quite a number of times. And so part of my artistic process has been, you know, coming to terms with my feelings about myself and also coming to terms with my feelings about my desire to have connection with another man and doing that in a healthy manner. Um, okay, and we go to the next slide. Um, this is an example of like one of the things that I've tried to construct with my work. You can see the guy on the bottom um, right hand side is the original picture that I wanted to work with. And it's a very, I think a very masculine, um, you know, male looking photo. And <clears throat> I wanted to put him in a bed of flowers to um, soften that masculinity or to look at it in a different way. So the, um, the image on the top is a, a, a picture of some, let's see, it's a Latkana plantain um, in the garden where I live that I took a shot and then I um, uh, uh, posterized it um, to get that feeling. And I also worked on his face to make him look more romantic and mysterious. Um, and so this is my idea of imposing a bed of flowers on that very masculine, aggressive, you know, like image that I started out with. 
Okay, and if you could go to the next slide. Um, these are a couple of other images um, that I um, that I put together as well. Again, using men that I appropriated from a gay porn site, but put them in a very different kind of environment. Um, I am um, um, the the image of the young man with all the leaves around him is actually a snap from a video um, that I took. And I just, I, I just think that it's, it's such a beautiful way to present him. The title of that image is called La Petite Mort. And um, it actually, uh, the image that I used was him um, in the video having an orgasm. And uh, I just, I believe what I created with that uh, represents a very different feeling. Um, if you go to the next slide, that is um, some further examples of, again, using those, uh, those same images and putting the men in a very floral and in a very beautiful and a very soft, um, soft kind of environment. Um, let me see, I'm trying to go back and look at my notes to make sure I didn't miss anything. I, you know, I love putting men in flowers. Um, it's, it's not a trope that you generally see men in. And I just think it's uh, so romantic and beautiful. Um, the two guys, let's see, it would be on your right, my, my uh, my left. Um, these are I, I I actually know the the porn stars. The guy in the back is um, Sam Turret. The guy in the front is Trent. I forget what his last name is, but I've used them in a number of in a number of my photos. Um, and this is not what the original images looked like, but this is the way that I want to see them. Um, the same for all three of for all three of those images, this is the way that I want to look at men. This is the kind of relationship that I want to have with men that I was not able to achieve in my life. So my, um, my art is a way of me visualizing and manifesting what my desires are. Okay, next slide. Um, this is, I wanted to show this slide because this was the first time I showed any of my work in a, in a gallery. This was in 2014 at the Los Angeles Center for Digital Art. And um, you can see me standing next to one of those images there. Um, that was a, I don't know, there's, um, having your work put up in a public space, um, that was just like really huge to me. Um, and it was, it was uh, such a validation of, you know, myself and um, the vision that I had. So I'm, I'm, I'm really grateful um, to, uh, to LACTA, which um, unfortunately no longer exists, but um, was a really, really beautiful gallery space. And I, I actually had a solo show there at one point, um, but this was kind of my first experience in saying, oh God, um, people might want to look at my art. Um, people might appreciate what, I am, um, what I'm trying to do. Okay, uh, next slide, please. Um, and because I'm an academic and because of course um, you need to put a name to what you're doing, I just want to um, highlight two really important artists or, or two important uh, uh, discoveries that I made. This book, Post, Photograph uh, Post Photography by Robert Shore, um, this is, I call my work post-photography post -photography 
this was a very influential um, book for me. And um, it's all, I love the, the, the statement that he makes um, that the real world is full of cameras and there are so many images everywhere. And what does an artist, you know, a, a photographic artist do, an artist photographer do with that stuff? And my, my answer to that is that I'm going to use the dark room in my mind to create the kind of image that I want to show. Um, the other person that, or the other person that I want to mention in terms of my own work is Robert Summers, um, who did a wonderful program um, in 2017 at the um, College Arts Association at the Convention Center in downtown um, LA. Um, and his show was called Tender Masculinities. And he is, um, he is the person that gave me that idea that that is what, you know, that that is what I wanted to create in my art or show in my art, a tender masculinity, a different way of thinking of masculinity. Um, so those are, I just wanted to mention those two things because they're very important influences on me. Robert Summers is unfortunately no longer with us, but his influence on me and the conversations that we had about art were very, very significant um, to my life. Um, okay, next slide. Um, another one of my favorite topics or ideas is that I live in the city of angels. Isn't that isn't that just a wonderful you know concept? And you know I I love that idea. And part of part of some of the art that I've worked on is taking the wonderful views that I have of the city and incorporating men into them, such as this one. Um, let's go to the next slide which um, I wanted to kind of just give an explanation of how I constructed this image. As you can see, the, the guy in the image, I you know, appropriated from a Tumblr page. Um, the photograph of the city is my own. And then I found a couple of other elements on the internet that I wanted to combine to give what I call the feeling of a flaming angel. And that's what he is. Um, I found the, um, and this is, my work is very layered. Um, I do it all in um, Photoshop. And I, you know, it's a whole process of figuring out, you know, what is going to go on top of what, how transparent each layer is going to be, um, and creating the final image. So, I just wanted to, you know, to give people an idea of like how I construct an image. Um, let's go to the next slide. This is another view um, of the city that I, you know, I also took the photo at night from the deck where I live and um, incorporated a young man um, into the image. Um, next slide. Um, and this, this piece, I'm kind of really, really proud of this piece. Um, I called it Urban Landscape. And um, one of the reasons, it was a really large, um, large image framed. It was uh, four feet wide. Um, and it was purchased by a regular family in Malibu. And I just think it's really wonderful that the, the guy in that image you know, like was appropriated from a porn site. And, and you can see that I spent a lot of time, you know, positioning him um, and trans and showing the city through him. Um, but I love the idea that um, it's a really queer piece of art, but it was, it's, you know, sitting in a really expensive home in Malibu. So, that makes me very, very happy. 
All right, next slide. Um, all right, so the other thing I'm just was really fascinated by um, looking at all of the work that um, Jen had done with transgender individuals um, that gender is such an interesting um, is such an interesting issue for me and I have um, um, I this uh, this term epicene is something that I came across on the internet um, it's I hadn't no I hadn't known this word before I was actually looking for synonyms of the word androgyny and came up with this. Um, epicene means having characteristics of both sexes or no characteristics of either sex, of indeterminate sex. And that is one of the things that I find most interesting and most beautiful about men. So these couple of images are um, my expression of that kind of um, of that kind of androgyny. Um, uh, let's see. I just I looking at my notes again here too. I you know, and I wanted to talk about that. You know, one of the things that I was exposed to in my academic work was Judith Butler and the whole concept of gender performativity and the fact that gender is possibly not biologically, but is a performative, um, a performative thing. Uh, that's kind of really interesting to me. And um, in each one of these images that I'm showing, um, um, I was trying to, you know, um, create that feeling. Um, let's go to the next slide. Um, this is another. Um, this is another example that I wanted to provide to show, like how I actually construct an image. Um, the guy is somebody that I found in a photograph on X Hamster, um, and I just I love the photograph so much, and I thought, oh, I need to work with him. And so this, I called this piece seaweed. And um, as you can see, you know, I spent a lot of time changing those thorns that are actually thorns to make them look like seaweed and to give the whole cast a sort of underwater feeling to it. Um, next slide. Um, this is that same um, person that I utilized in another image. And you can see the photograph that I took. This is, you know, like um, a photograph on my neighborhood walk, which I, you know, like do every day. Um, and I used the Photoshop sketch tool to kind of um, re-envision how I was presenting the, the palms and you know, like posterizing them and colorizing them in a way that I thought gave a really interesting feeling to the piece. Um, next slide. Um, and this is, you know, this is that same photograph that I utilized in a different man manner. This guy, um, Michael Del Rey, is. Um, He's actually a porn obsession of mine. I actually think he's rather masculine looking, but I have tried to present him in a way that looks um, much more interesting and softer. Um, so let's go to the next slide. All right, so, and this, um, this image is actually, you know, like shown in the, and. I will, you know, um, come to a close uh, shortly. Um, this this is actually a collaborative um, experience that um, that I discovered on the internet. Um, uh, Lewis, who is this young young man, um, actually lives in France and only speaks French, so. 
all of my conversation with him has been with via Google Translator, but he really, he liked the work, the work that I was doing and said, oh, would you like to, would you like me to send you some photos of myself? Would you be interested in working with them? And so um, I was really, he sent me quite a lot of photographs. And so this is one of the pieces that I've done. You can see the photograph that he sent me. And then I, you know, and this is how I repurposed it and reprocessed it to give it a different feel. Um, if you would go to the next slide, um, this is also a photograph that he um, sent me. And one of the things that I found so interesting about Lewis is that he does a lot of drag performance. And not as only is he um, a really attractive young man, um, he also looks really beautiful as a woman. And so he sent me this, um, this photograph and I decided I wanted to um, utilize it. And I um, found this wonderful photo of the Argyle Hotel, which um, is in the public domain. And it, you know, it was put in the public domain by the photographer. So I did not feel any hesitation. And I did check that before I utilized the image because I don't believe in utilizing other people's photographs without permission unless it's porn. Um, but anyway, there is the image that I created called Lewis on Sunset Boulevard. And let's go to the next um, slide. And uh, um, one more. Uh, and then these are two images that Lewis sent me that really, that really spoke to me about how, you know, gender is really only a perception. And um, I, you know, saw these as two very different photographs of him that I wanted to just create the sense of, wow, um, you know, gender can be expressed in so many different ways. Um, okay. And so let, uh, next slide, and then I will wrap up really quickly. This, um, this is my most recent solo show that I did at Tag Gallery in 2021. And it is on my website. And there's a video where I talk a lot about my process and the art that you know, I've created. And so for anybody that's interested, you can, you know, like, uh, you can watch the video on my website. Um, next slide. Um, these are some of my most recent pieces that I've been working on in this last, you know, in this last year. Um, they're my attempts to possibly make things less pretty and more interesting, um, if that makes any sense. And um, I'm gonna conclude on the last slide, um, which is also a very recent piece and one of my favorite, um, one of my favorite pieces. And I just wanted to stop by saying that my work is an, is an attempt to transcend my own scars around male sexuality, male identity, and man-on-man -man relationship. Romance, softness, beauty, and emotional connection are after all in our patriarchal culture considered feminine qualities and not appropriate to quote real men. So I believe that to unabashedly celebrate male beauty, softness and connection is a truly radical act and a deeply transgressive and liberating counter narrative. I hope that my work connects deeply to a spiritual aspect of gay identity that reflects a different kind, a different way of seeing and thinking about being male. And it's 8.15 and so I'm ending. Thank you. Thank you so much, John. You're welcome.
perfect, perfect timing. <laughs> <laughs> um, really beautiful work. You know, at this time, I'd like to move to the Q&A portion of the evening. So um, if there are any questions out there, please go ahead and type those in in the chat there and we will get to them. Um, I have a few questions. Um, first for you, John, how long do you work on a, like what is your, I know it probably varies, but what is your average of how long does it take you to work on a photo? Um, it, it's really interesting. It depends on how quickly the idea comes to me. Um, I have done pieces, you know, like in like a couple of hours um, when they really made sense to me and it just really fit together perfectly. Part of it is when you're combining multiple photographs, they have to kind of, you know, work together. You've got to kind of figure out how to fit the person in there. Um, and sometimes I can spend several days um, on a piece, um, but each, they're all constructed. Gotcha. And Jen, um, I have a question about your transformational project portraits. Um, they're, you know, they're very straight on, very confrontational, and they're, some people are partially undressed, some people are fully undressed. How does that kind of conversation go? Like, how do, do they just offer that up? Or, or like, how, can you talk about how that happens? Sure, that's a great question. Thank you. Because um, I get that a lot. And yes, they're they're very confrontational, the, the images. Um, to some viewers, it might be kind of almost startling of like, oh, I didn't know that was, you know, it's very, and that said really quickly, John, I loved your work. Thank you for sharing all that. It was really Thank you. inspiring, for real. Thank you. Um, and to answer your question, Matthew, um, I never ask anyone to get undressed. I never do. It's it's always what I've been told by my subjects is that they just feel so comfortable and it's a platform for them to show who they are. And mm -hmm. so um, sometimes uh, it's fully dressed and that's it. And I'm sometimes really great with that. You know what I mean? <laughs> like, awesome. And then there's sometimes when someone's like, do you mind if I, I just got this done and I would love to document that. And I'm always a yes, because honestly, this time that I have with each, each subject is also, it's about them and for them as well, um, to, to show their empowerment, to show that who they are, who, how they want to be seen. And that's really what that project has turned into more so over the years is more about, um, it's about them and who they, how they wanna be seen. And if they wanna get completely naked, if they wanna show me whatever it is that they wanna show me, whatever they've been got done, reconstructive, whatever it might be, uh, I'll always allow that. Um, and if they just wanna come and just have a very PC photo done, I'm thrilled with that too. So it's whoever and however, whoever it is, however they want to be, it's welcome. And they're you said that, sorry, go ahead, John. I mean, they're really, really powerful images. Um, and the trust that shows in those images is just really profound. I, I just think it's a really important project. Thank you. Thank you. I appreciate that. It hasn't been seen very much. I haven't had many shows. Um, funny enough, the West Hollywood Library wanted, they came to me to do a show there several years back and then changed their minds because they said it was too confrontational mm. for people to see, um, which I thought, I'm like, damn, man, like if any place in West, in LA would be like the WeHo, but um, WeHo was yeah. Really so. Yeah, I imagine, I imagine, you know, with public spaces, oftentimes, you know, they have to take kids and kids into consideration. Oh, yeah. So that's, that's unfortunately probably what happened. But, but I'm forever looking for a space for it, though. I'm always looking yeah. for a space to show it. Let me see would... wall space. Check out wall space. Um, they've done some really interesting transgender shows. And um, I really like, I really like their space. Cool. Thank you. And I think it would be amazing as a book project because it would uh, allow us to read some of your interviews and 
and get more information on your subjects, which I think would be very cool. Thank how, you, how long? How long do you spend with each one? Because you were talked about how they can, they're kind of back to back. So I was curious. As well. Honestly, it really depends how open each person wants to be. Um, I've spent an hour with people. I've spent five minutes with people. It's really, I never push anything out of someone. I'll be there and I'll communicate and I have, I'll start a conversation. If they want to continue on in that conversation, they can. If they want to indulge in what their process is, where they're at in their transition, it's open for that. And <clears throat> the stories I've heard, I mean, it's incredible. It's really, I mean, I'm an out lesbian. I came out when I was young, when I was 17. I have my own story of coming out, but having to come out as a transgender human being and that story and how that evolves, it's, it's, it's amazing. It's a story that needs to be told. Yes. For humanity, really. It's really is a special story. Yes, I agree very much. Um, so I have a question for both of you. Um, obviously, you know, we're, we're of different ages, but, but things I think in, in all of our lifetimes have changed as far as gay representation um, in, in our society in general, as far as gay, you know, feelings towards uh, queer people. And I'm just wondering, um, are there are there early influences as far as, you know, discovering your own sexuality um, that still impact your work today? Or um, are you, um, is the openness of today's society, you know, kind of where does, where does the influence of this long process that society has gone through impact your work, if it does at all? So for, for either or both of you. Well, I think, you know, um, I think what Jen is doing is really important because gender is the new big boogeyman. Um, and the whole concept of, you know, uh, trans, transgender youth, uh, transgenderism, what that even means um, is the current, you know, um, punching bag of the Republican right. So I think that always humanizing things is important. And, you know, and what I get from your work, Jen, is that these are real people. They're real people. Um, and it, that shows so clearly in the work. And I think that that's really important. Thank you. I appreciate that. Yeah, same. I think it's important for us as artists to use our craft to speak up about um, things that we believe in. If it's LGBTQ, if it's about uh, abortion rights, if it's about women's rights, if it's about immigration, if it's about this, if it's about that. I think it's important as an artist, if they're willing to, to utilize what we do to speak that. Um, and stand up for it. And that's for me, like the trans project has been about that as well, to show support, to show that here I am, here we are, like, let's do this. Um, even, you know, in all areas. Um, I don't know if that answers your question, but I, 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 a lot of my work is influenced by what's happening now in today's climate. Mm -hmm. for sure. I also think, I, for me, um, it's really, I utilize a lot of pornographic images. I spend a lot of time with pornography. Um, I'm not sure what I think about that in terms of my mental health, but bringing an art process to that has been really healing to me and has allowed me to see those people not as objects, not as things, but as real people um, that, you know, when I work with my images, I'm having a sense of feeling about them. Um, and that's a, to me, that's a really beautiful thing to bring to a sex worker. Uh, John, you mentioned that um, 
you, you, I don't know if you said you, you knew or you met one of the men in your photos. And I wanted to ask, have, have, have you, sh have any of the men in your photos seen your work or your interpretation of the pictures? Um, the only person that I've um, had secondhand conversations with is Michael Del Rey, and I have invited him to come and look at my work, but he has so far. Um, but um, I, you know, I, I just, I find him fascinating. Um, and the reason I find him fascinating is because I discovered him on a YouTube channel before I ever saw any of his pornography where he was reading poetry. And it was, it has such a lovely voice. And it, you know, and that was where I made an emotional connection with him. Um, I'm really glad that I'm not dealing with these people in person because it's better for me to work with them at a distance. Right, I understand that. And, and Jen, you're, you're almost the flip side. Your, your work is all about being in person and being, it seems like one-on-one -on -one a lot of the time. It doesn't seem like, I, looking at your shots, it doesn't seem like you have a crew behind you on a lot of those uh, intimate kind of portraits that you're doing. Um, so you're, you're, you're being able to talk to them and relate to them one-on-one -on -one is, seems like a major value to you in, in what you do. Yeah, most, most of the work I do when it's like uh, stuff that you saw Mark or John Batiste or Dave or any of that kind of work, it's usually one-on-one. -on -one. Um, I, when I have big production shoots, yes, there's like a whole crew, there's a, you know what I mean, studio, hair, makeup, tech, digitech, systems, you know, it's a whole, it's a whole thing. But this kind of work, when it comes down to my personal work, um, it's just me and the subject. And it's us in a room or in a studio, and I usually will have my wife, you know, or somebody out in the hallway organizing who's next and who's coming in and, you know, signing the, the release and then coming in and coming out. But there's never ever overlap. It's very private. Um, I would never, you know, have a whole crew there and something so intimate. And I would never get the intimacy of the portraits that I get if I had like mm -hmm. a big show there to hang out with the crew. It's, just, it's a different that's, environment. That's very much what I see with those, what I would call celebrity portraits is they're very human. Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, you're, you know, I'm looking at them not as celebrities, but as human beings. And that's a, that's a different way of seeing those people. And I really appreciate that. Oh, that's right. Thank you. I always say to my subjects, trans stuff to the side, but like my celebrity work and my, my you know, stuff that pays for my life, right? Like mm -hmm. I always ask them before the shoot and during and right before we start and like, if I'm going to show up, I'm going to show up to be my best self. How about you show up to be your best selves? And then okay. we just show up together and then we create and like, let's leave ego to the side. Let's see who we think we are, all that stuff outdoors. And we just play. And that's the thing with John. I was like, let's, let's play. Let's be kids, let's have fun. And those are the shots really are like, when I'm taking those, I know what I'm getting. I see what I'm, what's happening. I get so excited because like, I know like I got you. I fucking got you, you know? Like it's like that moment of like, Dude, you showed up and I always say thank you like thank you for showing up and they're like well man thank you you know like it's a because it's real it's you know there's photographers that could come and subjects I'm not going to name names that could be like you know it's all about them you know and like I'm the photographer you know I'm a photographer I'm not the celebrity I'm the photographer I'm there to document I'm there to tell that story and um when when the season's just right and the recipe is just right, it really lines and you create something cool. And because uh, a, a lot of our audiences are photographers as well, I'd like to get just, you know, I'd love to ask you what your camera is and um, like any little nerdy questions like that. Uh, what do you sure. what do you shoot with usually when you're? Uh, I shoot with the Canon Mark IV. Mm -hmm and uh, candle lenses. And I also, I my lighting for studios, pro photo, uh, and I shoot a lot with my Leica as well, Leica Q. Okay. 
at. So that's not the black and white one you, you used also at some point. Yeah, I, I mean, I, I tend to turn a lot of my work into black and white. And I know from my black and white work, but I, um, my Leica, I, I tend to do, I mean, I love, what I love about that Leica Q, it, it's so cinematic that it feels like it could be filmed just by the lens and, and how, how, it, how I shoot with it. Um, but I, I do love to get black and white. And so that's usually like my black and white. And uh, yeah, it's kind of, kind of. Well, you're, you know, I, you're really successful and I really acknowledge that I'm, I'm really privileged in the fact that I, you know, am retired and I have a good social security check and I fortunately don't have to live off of my art because otherwise I would be starving. And so I, you know, I appreciate, I appreciate the fact that art is a very hard career it's a very hard thing to make a career out of. Um, and so I, you know, I just want to acknowledge that. And I want to acknowledge for all the people who, you know, and Matthew, you too, you know, I, you know, I really acknowledge that it, it's important. Yeah, and thanks thank for bringing that to us. Mm -hmm. yeah. Well, thank you both for sharing your work with us tonight. It was really wonderful to, to hear a little bit more about your process and about the work. Um, Thank you. I want to, it's, it's time we have to wrap it up. So uh, thank you to LACP for creating this space for us tonight um, to have this conversation. And thank you for everyone who joined us this evening. Um, we hope you know come back next Wednesday for our last uh, of the three uh, talks that we're having. Um, again, thank you, Jen. Thank you, John, uh, so much for sharing your, your time and your work with us tonight. Yeah, thank you so much for having me. It's always a privilege to be asked. So thank you. I agree. Thank you both. Good night, everyone. Have a great week. And we'll see you hopefully next Wednesday.